A tree diagram or a conditional probability diagram is oftentimes a problem that you're going to see on the AP statistics exam. And here's an example of that. And we'll do this kind of an example for a review over conditional probability and tree diagrams. So a certain disease affects every one out of 5,000 people. There is a test to determine if you have this disease, and it gives a positive result or a negative result. However, the test gives a false positive 3% of the time and a false negative 2% of the time. The question is, if someone tests positive, what is the probability they actually have the disease? So the first thing we have to think about is, what's the probability that a person has the disease? And the probability that somebody has the disease, we'll abbreviate disease, D-I-S, is equal to, well, one out of every 5,000 people have the disease. And this is the um, probability for that is 0.0002. That is one out of 5,000. So now we have to um, think about ourselves as this person here, okay? And as this person, actually I'm going to uh, move this guy over here a little bit to give myself some more room. As this person here, I'm either going to have the disease or I'm not. So I have the disease is the first option. Very rare chance I have the disease or I don't have the disease. Now, if the probability I have the disease is 0.0002, that makes the probability I don't have the disease very likely 0.9998. Now, whether I have the disease or don't have the disease, I'm going to take a test to find out. When I take that test, I'm going to test positive, telling me I have it, or I'm going to test negative, telling me I don't. If I test, if I don't have the disease and I take the test, once again, I could test positive, telling me I have it, or negative, telling me I don't. And this test was told that it has some issues. One issue, it has a false positive 3% of the time, a false positive. So a false positive is a positive that's wrong. So let's figure out where that's at here. Well, this positive right here is a true positive. It's positive, and you have the disease. So this is not a, um, this value right here, the one I'm talking about, this is not a false positive. So this one right here is a false positive. This is the one where we have the point oh three because this would be a positive when you don't have the disease again it's a false positive it's a positive that's wrong so that means the probability of a true negative or a negative when you don't have the disease would be 0.97 so there's a uh, if you don't have the disease there's 97 percent chance you have a negative result 0.03 or three percent chance that you um do have a positive result uh, the other thing they told us with this test is it also gives false negatives, and a false negative that gives 2% of the time. So a false negative is a negative that's false. So once again, this down here, the 0.97, that is what we call a true negative because it's a negative when you don't have the disease. So this one right here would be the false negative. So this negative right here would be 0.02. That's a negative result when you have the disease. Again, that's why it's wrong. False meaning it's wrong. So you have a 0.98 of having what we call a true positive, meaning you have the disease and it is true, you got a positive result. Positive and it's true. So that's kind of how you decipher the meaning between a false positive and a false negative. Now the, con the, pro the question itself is a conditional probability. They say, what's the probability that somebody actually has the disease? So we're trying to find the probability somebody has the disease. So somebody might think right away, oh, that's one out of 5,000. Well, that's not really what the question's asking. The question says, if someone tests positive, so we have a condition. We know that they tested positive. This has already occurred. They have a positive test result. What's the probability they actually have the disease? So we're going to have to utilize our conditional probability formula. If you remember, the conditional probability formula on top is the probability of disease and testing positive. So that's both disease and the upside down U testing positive. So the probability of disease and testing positive. And on the bottom is the probability of the condition, the probability of testing positive. So on top would be positive and has the disease. So that's a very specific branch, this tree diagram right here. So start off on this branch right here where we have the disease. That's where we're going to start off. And then we're going to work our way to this branch where we have the disease with a positive result. So that's two things happening, have the disease and positive. So that's 0 0.0002 times 0 0.98. So that's the top here. Again, disease and positive result. 
on the bottom is the probability of a positive result. Well, there's two branches that lead to the probability of a positive result, because there's no condition attached to this positive result. So it's the branch that we were just talking about that leads to a positive result, or there's this other branch down here that also leads to a positive result. Again, don't have the disease, and then you come to the positive result right here. So there's two ways that can happen. So on the bottom of this fraction, I'm going to need a little bit more space here. We need a um, parenthesis because there's, there's a couple options. The first option is you have the disease and positive. So again, that was what was on top, 0.002 times 0.98. And then there's another option. Or you could not have the disease, 0.9998 times positive result, 0.03. So when you type this into your calculator, the number on top is going to be a pretty small number. Let me calculate it real quick here. 0 0.0002 times 0 0.98. Again, have the disease and testing positive. And that is a very small number. It is 0 0.000196. And the bottom, be careful at the bottom. Make sure you don't necessarily need the price on your calculator because it will know to do the multiplication before the addition. But make sure you got all the decimals typed in there, right? And this right here is a 0 0.002 times 0.98. And um, once you calculate that total value, um, I believe you get 0 0.03019. Divide those two values out, 0 0.000196 divided by 0 0.03019. And you get uh, 0 0.00649. So very low answer there. And a lot of people kind of get confused by that because they're thinking, you know, not having maybe a probability background, they're thinking, wait a minute, if I have a positive result, I should have the disease. Well, why is this so low? And the reason is it's so rare in the first place to even have the disease. One out of 5,000, it's so rare to even have the disease in the first place that if you get a positive result, it's probably going to be a false positive. That's probably what's going to happen because it's so rare to even have the disease in the first place. So this right here, where you have the, don't have the disease and a positive result, this 0 0.9998 times 0 0.03, that's the majority of the positive results right there. So again, if you have a positive result, probability of getting the disease is very, very low, 0 0.00649. And the logic behind that is there's so few people that have the disease in the first place. So this is a good example. It demonstrates tree diagram, and it, it demonstrates this idea of conditional probability.